Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial on how to make the Leviathan Axe. Uh, we are going to learn how to make a low poly axe using the um, axe from God of War as a reference. The tutorial will focus um, on how, how to use the 3ds Max for the low poly mesh and, and how to unwrap it. Uh, it will also uh, you know, also use ZBrush for detailing and then Substance Painter for creating our textures. Um, so this tutorial is aimed at uh, beginners to intermediate levels um, and it simplifies some of the usual problems that people encounter when modeling from reference. I hope you will enjoy watching it. And uh, please leave a like if you learn something new. Uh, if you want to know more about my channel, please subscribe and press the bell notification to receive updates when I upload something new. Uh, the intro you will see in just a second will be showcased in a future tutorial on how to create animations in Blender for beginners and intermediates. Uh, thank you and I hope, uh, I hope you enjoy. Okay, so now that we are in 3ds Max, uh, we'll want to load a reference image inside of the viewport. We'll add it as a material on a plane. Um, it's normally what you would want to do is just you know go on Google, look for the Leviathan Axe, and you know you'll find this image basically, um, and just uh, download it into the project file. I've already got it there, um, and then we'll we'll upload that. We'll put that into a 3ds Max. In the viewports in here, <clears throat> just um, click the uh, viewport that's got the perspective um, uh, view on it and uh, press Alt W to go into full screen on this view. And now we'll go to the right here and we will so, uh, we'll create a plane. Um, you know, we'll, we'll basically balance the size of this plane based on the axe that we're going to, uh, based on the axe that we want to make. Uh, sorry, based on the material that we're going to upload. So that's the plane right there. Uh, let's just press G to deactivate the grid for now. Uh, we'll press M on the keyboard to open the material editor. And then in the material editor, we will um, you know, select the first material, uh, press this uh, box over here, which will open a material map browser. And if you open maps, you'll have this bitmap option. Once you select that, you can uh, pretty much go into um, wherever you've um, downloaded the um, the file, um, the uh, tutorial. Sorry, the yeah, the image that we want to use for a tutorial. Uh, so now that image is loaded on, as a material in here, and then if we press this button, it will assign the material to selection. So we have as assigned that material to this um, uh, plane. And if we press this uh, uh, button, sorry, not that button, um, this button right here, it will show the shader material in the viewport. Now we do have a problem with the material not showing up properly because of the plane being configured differently. Uh, what we can do is we can change the way the plane shows up in here. Uh, I'm just gonna go from the top view and I'm just press T on the keyboard to go to the top view and F3 to, to see the material. Now, some of the things that you may want to do here is you want to balance this in such a way um, that it basically has the axe shown appropriately. Um, you, you could try and match the, um, uh, the pixels basically on this plane uh, to the reference image. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's about it. I mean, I'm just gonna try and eyeball it here a bit, but that looks, uh, that looks about right maybe make it a bit wider because uh, based on how we um, put this reference in here uh, this is how our axe is going to look like so just press p on the on the keyboard to go into perspective mode and then we will press e on the keyboard to go into rotate rotation just then make sure the uh, angle snap toggle is on default keyboard a uh, letter a so we'll just rotate it to 90 degrees to make it stand upright and then one thing that I like to do is just press the letter R to go into scale mode again, uh, again and just really, 
you know, make this uh, bigger, basically. So this is our reference image that we've just loaded. If we press uh, F for front view, this is what basically what, what we get. We get the plane on the, um, we just see the edge of the plane. So we press the letter E on the keyboard to go into rotation mode and just rotate it to, uh, ni to, to 90, 90 degree. Um, once we've done that, we can press F3 to see the shaded material. Oh, sorry, I've rotated it the other way around. So let's just rotate it again to 180. So we have it in, um, so, we, so we have it in the front view um, like this, yeah? Okay, so now that this is done, um, I'm still inspecting it. I'm still inspecting the reference a bit to see if I need to widen it a bit more, which I believe I do. Um, and I think that's going to be it. It really all depends on the on the preference. If you want to be completely accurate, then you know you, you can you can definitely scale this image to be completely accurate to the material. I think there's also a way to make the plane be uh, stretched to fit the material perfectly. So um, again, it's not that important at this stage. Right, so we've got the image in here. Uh, it's not very, very clean, but we don't really need it at this stage. And ZBrush, when we want to look at the reference, reference that's when we will want to see the details in the higher, higher, uh, you know, higher quality. But right now, this will do. Um, so the where we're just going to go in perspective view by pressing P on the keyboard again. Uh, what we want to do is just press G to see the uh, the grid. We know that the plane is now centered in the grid, so we'll just move it a bit uh, back, um, so we can work on our model right about here. Right, so the first, the, the, the next thing that we're going to do is uh, let's close the material editor, press F on the keyboard again, and it's now uh, we want to freeze this plane. Oh, sorry, not freeze it because it will make the um, um, it, will, it will make the, it will make the uh, texture texture disappear. Well, just leave it out like that. It doesn't really matter as long as we're in front view. We won't, won't be able to select it once we start putting our lines down. So the first thing we want to do, let's make the handle. Uh, we'll go into uh, material into uh, sorry into the modifier list here, and we'll create um, we'll create our um, um, our, our handle. So you want to go through these options in here. You know you got standard primitives, splines, and so on. You want to be on splines, and then pick the line to the line tool, and then with the line tool, you will start basically doing a cutout of this model and it's it's very important you you're very accurate with it because this will sort of um, decide the shape of the handle so the more accurate you are with it the better um, like for example we can see here that the handle will sort of have a have a and then you know it goes uh, it's thinner well it's not as wide as the as the handle uh, sorry as the as the axe head so we'll just do that and it's all, um, you know, it's, it's all about doing these as close to the reference as possible. This is the, the way, the, the reason why I'm doing this is because if I wanted to make a cylinder to then uh, match to this, you know, that works as well. It's not really a problem, but I find this solution to be a lot better. Now, when we've got these, um, you know, these straps around here, you can see that they're thicker than the handle. All, I'm ca all I care about at the minute is the actual handle. We don't want to sort of get into the um, uh, problem of the of the strap as of yet. We can do that in ZBrush. It's gonna be a lot easier to do there. Um, okay, so uh, again, you can take the, take as much time here as you want, uh, add as many details as you, uh, you know, as many curves as you want. Uh, we will use a uh, Turbo Smooth modifier going forward. So we will add more geometry on this. Um, so here's the, trickier part because you have this uh, rounded selection that you need to do so again we'll just do that and you see here and again and again um, and just keep on going yeah uh, here's the the you know the head of this um, um, horse which needs to be you know, you want to be as close to the to the, to the reference as possible because we will use this shape to basically create the um, 
the horse and ZBrush. Uh, later on, we will not be adding any details into, into the 3ds Max. We won't be doing you know any sort of detailing in, Z, in, in 3ds Max. We're just going to have our shape. It's very important to have a clear and clean foundation uh, to start with, and then you can work out the, the de details in ZBrush. And one thing that we will be doing with the um, uh, low poly that we're making at the moment is we're going to use this and not start the retopology from scratch. And I'll show you how to do that. It, it's quite okay. I mean, you do need to modify it a bit and you need to change a few parameters, make it um, fit the model from ZBrush once you've, um, you know, tampered with the shape. But overall, it's going to be a lot better than starting from scratch. Um, okay, so now we pretty much, uh, let me just, if you press backspace on the keyboard, it will take you uh, back one line. Uh, there's no point in, um, in, yeah. Okay, so now it says close the spline and you say yes. Okay, so we've got our spline made. Now, if I go in here into the uh, layer explorer, explorer, but what I want to do is I want to deactivate the uh, plane for a bit. Right, so we'll just go into perspective and this is our line that we've created. If we press G on the keyboard, it will make the, um, as I said, make the uh, grid disappear. Right, so this is our spline. Now, it's not much we can do with at this point, it's just a shape, uh, sorry, just the contour of a shape. So if we go into the uh, modify, modify stack uh, list and we select, Sorry, we need to select uh, shell, and basically it gives us uh, this result. Um, and if I press F4 on the keyboard, uh, you can see that we've got all these um, edges now, but they're not connected with each other. Now, one thing that we want to do is we obviously want to connect from one side to the other, depending what sort of shape we want to maintain, without adding too many edges, because there's no point in doing that. Like I've said before, we will be um, fixing, we will be changing this into, um, uh, we will be adding a turbo smooth modifier later and that will make, that will give us the rounded shape. Now, uh, some of the things that you might, you might see is that, like I said, there's no connection between these and you definitely want to add the connection between one side and the other. Um, so, uh, what we'll be doing right now is we will go into, we'll add an edit poly modifier on top. And then with that, with that done, we can now start connecting some edges. Um, and the way we can do this is we can go to um, vertex mode. And from vertex mode, we can, for example, drag, uh, you know, uh, link this to the uh, link this vertex. We're using the cut tool up here. So we press that vertex and we press that one. And you can see now we've made a cut and we basically uh, lay down a, fo a foundation link. Uh, we can do the same thing here. You know, you, you can take this and you put it up, you can put it over there. Bear in mind that sometimes when you do the cut, um, it will, instead of cutting from one vertex to the other, you will actually be adding a new vertex. And this is something that you'll need to fix after. Or if you, if you really, you know, if you spot it in time, that's really good. But if you haven't, then, um, you know, you, that, you're definitely gonna be wanting to, um, to fix that later. So, um, as you can see here, it doesn't allow me to, so I've just added a vertex over there, so I can, I can connect it with this one. Hmm. So like that. The reason why it's not allowing me to do that is because I'm on the, um, so I'll show you now. If I press F4, you see, it, it's done the connection there. Um, Okay, yeah, no, it was just a problem with the not seeing the um, edge. Right, so I've added that there as well. As you can see, there needs to be some more connections on this side as well. We're not going to bother with that for the time being. Um, all these edge, all these um, uh, vertex, uh, vertexes exist only where we have a curve, uh, basically, because that's what we did when we made the um, when we made the uh, layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed this up. Um, just uh, just until I you know I finish it and then we'll resume once we go to the next um, to the next step I'm 
So we now got to a point where we have more vertexes, more, more vertexes uh, coming along and we obviously want to start connecting them as well. Now this is very important that here you add um, a geometry where it's actually needed and if you feel like there's some in there that shouldn't exist then, then remove it. Um, just be very mindful of the uh, cross show the cross showing for so you've got this cross showing for you when you're hovering a, a vertex and you've got this um, across this other different cross when you're hovering over an edge and this other cross when you're hovering over a plane so it's very important to to notice these so as you can see they don't have to be straight i mean you can straighten them um, if you if you really want to but so that would mean adding more vertexes to um uh, you know um sort of work out the all, all these um all these different shapes that we have we have different we have more shapes on this side than we have on this side so you, you just really need to know when to add a new vertex in and and when i you know it's not it's not some incredible thing thing to work out because you just you just add one for each of the vertexes you need on the other side but you do it in such a way that it's not going to uh, overcrowd the model. Like for example, here, if you want, you can remove that and and just have a flatter uh, appearance. But again, I don't I don't really want to do that. And you're gonna have these vertexes over here that you cannot connect on this side, which is fine. We'll just leave them uh, leave them like that for now, and then we'll uh, continue on uh, linking our uh, model here. Um, okay, like that. This is a very, this approach that we're doing right here, uh, by the way, is very, um, sorry, I just got out of cut the cut tool. Uh, this, um, this sort of method that we're using, um, the reason why I wasn't allowing me to select that is because I was actually selecting the, the edge on the, you know, behind. The, the reason why we're doing this is because I want everybody to understand how to do a, a cutout and how they're able to achieve some very nice results using some basic tools. See, right now, it's not allowing me to connect these. And the reason for that is because I'm selecting the one behind it rather than the, the one in front. So that's why if you're in front view, it's going to be a bit difficult to connect these just because of the uh, you know, 3ds Max thinking you want to select the ones at the back. You could, however, mitigate this by clicking here, ignore back facing. So if you're struggling with that, just do, just uh, you know, go with that option. Um, now, another thing to work out here is the, uh, how many vertexes you have everywhere to see if, you, if you're gonna have, we want to have quads basically, or triangles at the, at the uh, you know, uh, triangles or, or quads, but we definitely don't want to have end guns or anything like that. So for example, in this situation right here, we would have a we would finish with a with a polygon if this wasn't sorry with a quad if this wasn't here so if this vertex wasn't here so we can go into edge mode select that and just delete it by keeping control and backspace you know press keeping control press and then pressing backspace will delete the um, edge entirely if you don't do that and you just press delete on the keyboard it will delete the whole plane so you so just just uh, undo that and remove the edge. So we do have some, you know, we could, for example, we could remove this one here as well, but that will give a flatter surface and we don't, we don't necessarily want that. So um, this, is, this is our current uh, um, uh, sort of result that we have here. So some of the things that we, you can do, uh, rather than going for extremes of retopologization, just, you know, you can do something like that. I've created a triangle there, it's fine. Uh, we got one, two, you know, we got one, two, three four five vertexes so this is not going to do for this is not going to be an ideal situation so yet again we can do that if we want to and now we've got a quad here and we've got a few triangles here it's not going to affect your overall um, shape once you turbo smooth for example um, and we've got the same example here um, you can, for example, make this into a triangle and now you have one, two, three, four, five here. So it's not uh, a quad yet, but we can do that and we're okay now. Uh, you'll see when we, well, you'll see further down the line how this all comes together. Right. So this is our, this is our model now done uh, in terms of uh, uniting the vertexes from each side. Uh, so now we just need to replicate the same effect on the other side. So 
Now that now that we just uh, we, you know we're almost about done with the with the creating the shape, we've got to look for any sort of strag straggling um, vertexes. Like for example, we've got one here, and it is an important one as it creates another corner. So we'll um, we'll just add another edge there, and then on top here we have quite a few um, that are basically just you know uh, are basically not connected to anything. So one of the things that you can do is you know, you can do something like this. Um, you can also keep on, you know, connecting these like like that, you know, create, creating these shapes that are basically not going to go anywhere in terms of, uh, you know, continuous, um, a, a continuous path downwards uh, through, the, through, through the handle. Um, and now that we've done that, I believe this is all everything that we needed. Uh, what we'll do right now is we'll go into polygon mode by pressing 4 on the keyboard. Select, have by angle selected and then just press uh, this face. And then if you press Control i on the keyboard it will reverse the, um, uh, the selection and select everything uh, that wasn't our front facing um, plane and we'll press the uh, delete on the keyboard. And now we only have our shape that we worked on and connected all these vertices. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to, I mean, it, right at this stage, I would recommend trying to balance some of the, you know, um, some of the um, uh, faces if you want. So for example, on this edge here, you can select that vertex, um, apply a constraint to edge, and then just moving upwards, you know, just try and balance some of these shapes a bit uh, and make sure that um, they're, they're uh, as, as um, um, how should I say, uh, straight as possible if you if you you know the more you you move these the more it will change your shape a bit but this handle is uh, such a it's, it's a natu such a natural sort of um such a natural sort of uh, material and and uh, in the in the in the real world it's basically made out of wood um then, then you can play around with these shapes as much as you want if you don't you know that doesn't mean to sort of affect the overall design right so now we go into edge mode by pressing 2 on the keyboard and double clicking the this edge and this other edge. Now these are, have selected as much as they could. So for example, it doesn't select uh, over here for some reason. So if we go into edge mode, what you will see is that we actually have two vertexes and this is what's causing the issue. So we'll uh, press our target weld up here and select that vertex and connect it to this one. Uh, and now if we go back into edge mode, we will try this again. You know, I've double clicked it and double clicked again on the sides and it has selected as much as possible. Now it has gone into here where we, we obviously don't want that. So we'll press, we'll keep Alt press on the keyboard and just select these edges and that will deselect them. Uh, the reason why it's doing that is because we've got triangles here. So if it was a clean quad surface, we wouldn't have this issue. It would just go around. Uh, but we will just manually um, select these. Uh, edges. Again, you may have problems in some other places where there are more vertexes in there. Um, we can, we will be able to see those later on. So you can see here again, it's stopped because we've got triangles. Uh, it's stopped with the selection. If you double click on this edge now, it will, you know, try and select as much as possible, but it will also enter the shape itself. So it's not really a problem. We just deselect what we don't want selecting. Uh, see the same thing there, it has selected extra geometry and yeah, that's about it. We've now have the entire, uh, sorry about that, we now have the entire um, mesh selected, the, the, so the sides of the mesh. I don't know what that arrow, what, what these lines are, I think it's a glitch. Right, okay, so let me just go into, oh, it seems to be having it in every, in every, um, um, in, every, in every screen. Right, so now that we've got this done, uh, pressing W on the keyboard, we can, and, and keeping shift pressed, we can move it on the Y axis and just create a, oh, sorry. See, that's a mistake right there. I've tried to move it, but I've got edge constraints still active. So let's control, uh, let's, let's undo, control Z, and remove the constraint to edge. And now pressing the shift key and moving um, 
the uh, uh, moving it on the y-axis will uh, add these walls here, these uh, faces. So we'll do it about there. If we go, if we look on the other side as well, we, you know, we've now created a shape, which is fine. Um, let's get out of edge mode, and now let's apply a symmetry modifier. Um, and the symmetry modifier is just uh, then the left and the right side is just um, uh, mirror that. But what we'll do is we'll use the um, um, Z, the, the Z axis, okay? And if you uh, open the symmetry modifier and click on mirror, you can pretty much, you know, move these across as well. Now, we don't want to do that because they were just, you know, they were okay the way they were. And also, if you look over here, you've got a weld seam, which means they, they're, both, they're now welded as well, which is very good. Uh, so on top of the edit symmetry, on the symmetry, we'll add an edit poly modifier again. Okay, and now we just can continue our editing. Now all I'll do is I'll, I'll restart my 3ds Max and come back in so I, I get these dots to disappear. So some of the things that I see straight away here is that um, these triangles will basically get in our way, uh, just just from a from the point of a um, you know from from the topology point of view. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to remove them for now by double clicking the edge and then holding control and pressing backspace and then I'm going to do the same thing to this one and I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Now you see now I've got this uh, flat surface here which I'm going to resolve by uh, adding some edge uh, loops. So I'm just going to use swift loop to introduce these loops over here and they will help us to thicken the handle basically to make it more round. So now if I add a turbo smooth modifier, you know, you can see basically this is what our mesh looks like. Uh, I'll just go into edit poly. Uh, just make sure we deactivate show end result so we can basically have control over our mesh. I'm going to go into edge mode by pressing number two on the keyboard. And now I'm going to double click both of these edges and just scale them by using the by pressing letter R, I'm just going to scale them um, basically, um, you know, outside. Uh, sorry, on the um, you know, uh, just just to pull them pull them on the y-axis and just make them a lot thicker. And also, if I press Control I to reverse the uh, selection. I can basically expand the other uh, edges as well. Right. So now that we have that done. Uh, let's just get out of the, uh, edge mode and let's go into turbo smooth again and This is how our uh, model looks like now You can see that we've got these um, sort of creases created and this is because we started um, a sort of um, we, we use a scale in the wrong way So I'm just going to delete this turbo smooth modifier. Actually, I'm just going to undo to the point before we um, uh, made any modifications. So if I go into edit poly now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it at this point, right? Without, um, you know, I'm going to scale it to around this side, so it gets these two edges um, further apart from each other. And now I'm going to select, go into edge mode, and have those two edges selected, and I will pull those out as well around there yeah that should be okay and now when we go to turbo smooth this is the effect that we get um okay i'm just going to go into edit poly again go to edge mode and just pull these a bit further away and just go back in turbo smooth and you can see this is quite a nice um you know cylindrical shape um right now yeah so that's yeah i think this was about right uh, now if we increase the iterations we'll get you know a better result I do want to have a look as to what's going on here, and yeah, it's not it's not the greatest effect. As you can see, the this edge just came out a bit too much, and I'm guessing it's going to be the same um, for the other side. So I've just selected them both, and probably just going to try and scale them a bit inwards. Um, hopefully that will um, yeah, that gives us a better you know a cleaner result. Um, okay. So I think that's about it with the handle. Um, you know, if we look down here, I know we've got this uh, little bit of pinching happening over here, but it's not really a problem. Once we take into ZBrush, we can 
start modifying the topology well start modifying the the high poly and then we'll modify the topology later um, okay so now uh, let's just leave it leave this uh, the handle the way it is I will go into the layer explorer and bring our plane back in uh, inside and we'll start working on the axe head um, so I'm just going to deactivate the, the handle and now the same thing I'm going to start uh, putting up a line and, um, and and basically do the shape of the axe head so we'll start off by going to line again and we'll start from this point here uh, I'm just going to do it I'm not gonna make it a very sharp edge I'm just gonna you know just uh, bear in mind that this axe looks a bit uh, blunt in certain uh, areas I mean it is an axe that the uh, Kratos uses to pummel on gods and other such creatures uh, over here I don't want to go and create these triangle shapes because they are an inset into the into the blade itself and we're going to make them as a separate mesh after as you can see here it just comes off as a straight line so we'll just get to this point over here now it's very important that when you put these um, the, these uh, vertices in you make sure for example right here you want the vertex, uh, a vertex because this is where we'll, do, we'll go down with the topology to create um, a clear shape um, you know because we'll, we'll use that there to sort of uh, play with the um, w w with the um, edge of the axe and make it sharper uh, and that's going to help us out so again don't over deal with the vertices because you will have to with the vertices because you will have to connect them on the other side as well so think around uh, okay so that should be okay there so you see we go around and then the sorry that one was very good so when I get to the end I like to do this um, this um, sort of uh, you know add two extra verts there when I could just make it a sharp edge but the reason why I'm doing that is because that's going to generally give me a quad uh, result which is uh, you know uh, better um, okay so we'll go this way now bear in mind that when we will use uh, a turbo smooth modifier this will become quite a you know quite a nice curve uh, one thing to note is that we will not be using turbo smooth itself we will be using um, the open subdiv modifier which is going to give us a lot more control as to where we want to have sharp edges and where we want to have um, um, you know uh, more organic like ed uh, edges so you know when we when we dealt with the timber side of things on the handle it was okay with the turbo smooth because we just have all it's just an organic shape well with met when it comes to metal you have all these hard edges you've got the uh, obviously the um, edge of the uh, the cutting uh, part of the axe um, okay so you see I'm trying to do my best here to sort of have them being able to you know to, to connect so I'll go one on one side I would rather just have one on the other side as well it's gonna make it so much easier to connect these uh, vertexes together um, okay just gonna add some here and again I see that I've got one there another one there as well and then we've got one like that okay um, now if you're really you know perfectionist then you would be looking at how many you're adding here and then you'll, you'll be looking at the top as well to see how many you're adding on that side again very important stuff in order to get it right for example I don't have a vertex here but I'm going to add one right here so I could connect this one with this or I could make another one later on really the choice is up to you depending on what the topology requires um, it's obviously it's never going to be equal because these are not equal shapes uh, one side of the X is different is more different than the other one and now we're just going to close the spline and that's our object I'm gonna go back into layer explorer and just deactivate the plane and this is our shape basically of the X um, the same thing will go into the modifier list and then we will be adding a shell modifier so just by typing S on the keyboard it will take me to the S modifiers just tap it until you see shell so it's right over there uh, now I'm gonna press F4 for the um, wireframe and this is what we've got uh, same thing as before we want to add an edit poly um, 
and then we obviously want to start connecting <coughs> excuse me start connecting the uh, vertexes together so we'll go into um, a vertex mode and we'll start putting the this topology to good use so you know like that there that's a, a connection um we can connect it this way now bear in mind these are these connections that i'm making you know they're, they're okay this way but we could be doing something entirely different uh, actually i think i'm gonna do just that so you know how I, I take this one over here i bring it over to this point i then drag it again over here and then over here and then over here and over here and make sure that this edge is well sorry you can't really delete it at this point because it's just connected very weirdly so we do have this problem basically you see how uh, because I, I followed through like this it automatically tried to connect itself to a let's say what what it logically assumes it will be the next connection which it was wrong so if we undo that one way to to mitigate that effect would be to do a cut from this vertex to down here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do this so now if i take this one i can easily connect it over here and then i can connect this one over here the reason why i'm doing this is because i want to have a cleaner topology basically so there's a lot as i've said it's a balancing act of uh what, what you're looking for what, what you need in your model basically so look i've just just connected that there and then i've just connected this over here uh, we do have these extra vertices that show up um we'll just ha we'll have to remove them um these are not useful to us in any way uh, it's because we're cutting through the faces that, that that's the reason why these are being created because we're cutting through the faces of the um of this model but the more the more the more um, uh, geometry you're adding the less the intrusive this will be basically so that one i want to connect over there and this one i want to connect over here now i got to that stage now where these have nothing to connect to so i could potentially just go all the way across uh but i don't have enough enough uh, um you know en enough shapes at the minute to to work with so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and, and follow an edge flow here um although i've sort of messed that up a bit and now i'm just gonna go this way um not not my finest of works because you know I, for example i can move these just make sure the edge constraint is turned on so i can move these a bit higher you know move this a bit lower so it comes into line and then i can try and move these a bit across uh, moving moving uh, vertexes around with edge constraint is very useful for uh, topologizing this very well now one thing to note is the reason why I want this to be well made is because we're actually, as I said, we're going to use these models, this this model that we're making, this low poly. We're going to use it for our low poly mesh. I'm not going to start from scratch. Okay, so it's very important you get this right from, from the start. And if you need to modify later on, that's fine. But the better you get it done now, the, the easier it will be. Uh, okay, so now I've got this one here, which if I bring over to this point you know i will i will um, basically not have triangles but if i don't then i will have triangles so for the time being let's just bring it over here and then i'll bring this over here uh, remember the quad having these quads means that we're not going to have any issues even though they're not perfectly going uh, you know they're perfectly aligned so now i can connect this over here and i can connect i can connect it over here uh, I can connect this to this one and then over here. Um, this is very, I think it's very good for people to learn how to properly do uh, with this method. So you can see here, it's almost all quads. I mean, sorry, actually it's, it is almost, it is, it is all quads. So now what we want to do is we can connect these two here. That's br that bridges these shapes. And these are just basically, you know, we go down and, and we connect all of them. Uh, it's very important that you start in multiple places. Uh, the reason for that is, is because if you start in multiple places at the same time, you can sort of meet in between, uh, which is going to be very important. Um, you're starting different shapes, different, different, you know, you're starting different topologies in different places, and this will help you basically along your uh, path. 
so we've got these connected over here now I don't really I can't really get a clean um, a clean sort of uh, I can't get a clean for a quad here uh, at least not by connecting to the other side without creating this this you know a, a lot of a lot of edges in, in, in uh, the same uh, place so I could potentially be linking this one to something you know further up or again I could just be doing this um, time will tell which was the better option but I do need to have that angle basically to follow the shape of the object um, this one I would do this way I would, I would do it this way and then just you know connect to the uh, top just like that um, now we're starting to get into the wider range of the of the blade oh by the way you can use a snap toggle if you activate that and you right click it if you select vertex here then your cut tool will uh, default to vertexes it's just gonna make uh, things a lot easier you know on selections so over here we have a few options you see I can still I can connect this like this which is fine but I could also go on this side so again it's very important to select what we're going to do so what I'm thinking is I don't know yet so I can commit so if I can't commit I'll just see how my sort of how my shape flows um, so okay so I've got this which is fine now I can do this now one thing that we can do you know we're going to create these triangles if we go this way so rather than doing that let's just you know let's just experiment and just go on the sides and uh, link these like this just to see what we have uh, so I can still connect this to that one and now I'm sort of running out of, out of ideas but we do have some of these coming this way which we could connect like that right so now we have only a handful left that are not going to be you know they're not um quantifiable <laughs> let's say that right or we could as i said we could um, you know we can do this um so one two three four always keep that in mind uh, we do have a triangle over here now which is a you know a bit of a problem but not really because we're not going to deform the the shape in any way um, so at this stage we just kind of have to work out what we want to do how we're going to uh, work out this topology um, so what we want to do now is uh, we, again we want to experiment in such a way that how we're going to connect these so we can go this way we can link that one as well we can link this one as well this one and then this one now this potentially may create a bit of a pinching effect right um, one thing that we can do is we know from our plane that at this stage here we have this uh, where, where the axe gets sharper and sharper so I want to add an edge that would connect just like that you know, we connect from this point. Uh, by the way, deactivate snap toggles by pressing the S letter, so you can now um, go on these edges without any problems. Uh, so I just want to follow a bit of a path downwards, right? These edges are going to be selectable and useful to us to be able to um, change the um, uh, the thickness of the blade in this uh, in this uh, area. So my point here, uh, the reason why I'm not connecting directly to the bottom is because I wanted to give it a bit of a curve. Um, and then we need to decide where I'm going to connect it, which is probably going to be there. So, you know, I think, I think this is about ready in terms of the outside. We're going to make some modifications if we need to. We can look at these triangles after we apply a turbo smooth modifier. But as of yet, we don't need to do anything. All we need to do now is just connect these, uh, which I'm just going to do in a, in a second. So now we want to uh, do the same thing that we did to the other to the handle. Uh, we want to, um, you know, apply symmetry and and just have a duplicate on the other side as well. Um, so what we'll do is uh, go in polygon mode. Make sure you're you've got by angle selected. Press this um, face and just Control I on the keyboard to reverse and press delete. Now before proceed proceeding with our um, uh, you know our, our uh, modifier for, for um, adding adding thickness to this and using symmetry 
uh, we would want to check for any sort of errors so let's just go in rapid tools up here uh, you should guys should definitely get this if you don't have them they're very useful um, I think uh, Aramis 3d has some very nice tutorials on how to use this and we've got this rapid mesh cleanup utility and if we press find n gons on this it will now show us how many n gons we've got in our mesh uh, generally these are formed because there must be a rogue vertex in there so we'll start with the with this one uh, just press one on the keyboard um, obviously the, the, you know this is quite an obvious one we have one two three four uh, faces here so uh, sorry uh, vertexes so that's the problem and I think in reality, if I want to just get rid of this now, I will just do that and, and that's it, really. I mean, I can either do that or go the other way, uh, take this one and put it on. So we don't, we don't get the triangle, basically. Uh, right, now if we go back into polygon mode, so that's been resolved. Let's just move to the second one here and you can see it. That's, that's our problem. We've got this vertex over here. This is actually very useful to know. Because you, you always have this problem where there are end gons that you can see. Like, for example, in this example here, we don't even know where it is. So if we start moving uh, vertexes around, we should be able to uh, find it. And it's right there. So again, just attach, uh, sorry, target weld. And that gets rid of the end gon. Uh, and now we've got uh, this one here. And I believe it's because these both are affected. That means there's an end gon between them. So that sort of uh, makes, make uh, you know, somewhere around here in this vicinity. So if I move that, yeah, there it is. So again, um, this is happening because we use the cut tool and uh, we just didn't connect properly. Um, okay, and the last one is here. So again, it's going to be between them because that's why they're both affected. And that's where it is. So I will just pull that in. And that's it. We've if we press now find end gons again, there are no more end gons to look at. So now we can proceed with um, you know applying symmetry to our uh, to our mesh. So right now I'm just gonna um, you know leave the end gons a bit there. It's not really a problem. This acts as a, as an edit poly anyway. So I'm just gonna press two on the keyboard and start selecting the edges um, as I. You know go around them you'll see i'm gonna double click in the major areas and just uh basically select this well, wherever there are triangles i will have this uh this issue where the selection goes uh, through the mesh um or or whatever the whatever 3ds max things is a loop a loop uh, continues through it's not really a problem um you know you, you can just easily deselect anything that gets like you didn't want um Okay, so that's those sizes sides there. We don't oh uh, That's a bit that's a bit of a tricky one. We don't want to start deselecting all of that Okay So let me just deselect this um, Okay, and now I'm just gonna oh Right, okay, so now I think I've got uh, pretty much everything selected. There's nothing else. That I, oh, it's just this um, this top here. Uh, okay, so now I've got everything, all the outer layers selected. I'm just going to press W on the keyboard and pull away on the Y scale. Uh, give it a bit of thickness. That's about right. And now what I want to do is I want to apply uh, symmetry. Make sure it's on the Z axis. And that's it. That, there we have it. It's now copied. Uh, we'll add another edit poly on top and now let's just add two loops over here this will help uh, help out with some of the thickness issues that we might have and if we now apply a open subdiv I want to use open subdiv here like I've said um, this is our basically our shape so we go back into edit poly and we would like to start thickening thickening some of this up um, so I'm thinking, yeah, we'll just select these vertexes, but uh, make sure you don't have ignore back face selected so we can take the ones from the other side as well. Now, there is a problem here because these aren't really lined up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure we've got edge constraint active and I'm going to move them like that. You can, you can do a rotate to straighten them out a bit and just basically I want to get them into the same um you know make, make sure we've got the topology that logically makes sense here right 
so something like that and maybe maybe we do the same thing here we pull these a bit pull that one a bit as well this one and that should be okay right okay now i'm going to select all of these uh, i'm going to go into perspective mode pressing p on the keyboard and then i'm just going to um well i would like to pull <laughs> But I've got the edge constraints on. Sorry about that. Right, so now you can see as we pull away, <clears throat> we are thickening our <clears throat> our blade, our sorry, our handle. Uh, let's just go into the layer explorer and add our handle in because now we want to see how it, um, you know, how we're going to shape it around that handle. So I think that's about right. Okay. Um, now if we go to our open subdiv again this is basically the shape of it at the minute oh uh what i want to do also let me just open the material editor um and i will create you know not the first one but the second one i will call that handle and i will select the handle and just press this button here to assign the material over there and then on the, on the other one i'm going to call it uh head just just leave it like that uh the idea here is that this is how these are going to be our layers our texture sets in substance painter later on um but yeah the gray this this uh, color is going to make you know be better for our modeling anyway so this is what we've got so far uh let's just go back into into this um you know the 3ds max remembers your selection basically so it is that's okay now the what I saw on the uh, on on our um, reference is that these actually go, you know, they come out of the out of the handle, and the handle has a bit of a, you know, um, it's it's actually um, there's like there's like a curve in here, there's like a, um, um, a chisel in, in this in this area. So I'm only gonna I'm gonna um, look at that later on when I actually do the high poly, rather than look at it now. Uh, more importantly, we just need to get our shape correctly. So let's just go back into front view and let's start taking some of our vertexes like this, you know, select them, go back into perspective and start widening them up a bit, um, maybe around there. I think I should have gotten this one and this one as well. So yeah, make sure you select those as well and then and then widen. Now, if we deselect some of these, you know, just go a bit, go a bit wider. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Now we want to select these, for example, here and go a bit wider. Now we want to grab the edges at the end and we'll, we'll, we'll make that um, thinner something like that now we can't have these be too um, um, you know it needs to be needs a bit a bit a bit more thickness in here again this is uh, based on the reference of the of the axe depending on how thick you want to make it over here you can go to top view and just really start playing a bit with some of these um, some of these settings so you know depending on how wide you want it so again we can select over here and just make sure we select just those vertexes and not something else so you see uh, sorry about that so we've got all of these um because of the poly because of the way the topology is set up in here we may have a bit of an issue so you know you may want to select all of these like that and then make it wider i think i think that should be enough Let's just open the, let's just um, go to, um, you know, a higher quality version of this model into perspective mode. And this is what it looks like at the minute. Okay, we'll probably revisit that. Notice that we have a very clean, sorry, a very curved edge when it actually should be a, a hard edge. But we're going to deal with that using a crease set modifier. But before we, you know, even attempt doing that, uh, we just need to make sure that our blade is thick enough um, as is. So same thing, you know, we go into front view and we'll select these. And well, you see, we've got a, we've got a better topology on this side actually than the other side. 
so we can select these a lot uh, a lot better um, okay something like that again we need to select that one as well and I believe this one yeah so let's just try to let's just try to thicken it now see it creates this problem here right and this is basically what we don't want so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I've got everything selected and actually what we could be doing here is we could push them we could push them on the other side you know we can we can take some of these so for example we can take these make sure it's uh, edge constraint is on and just take them on like that uh, you can use uh, rotate to move them into position but you know to try and put them all into a, a better topology um, again rotate pull in um, let's just try to see what happens there okay yeah we can easily we can do that as well um, might need a bit more on this side okay something like that right this is our this is where our uh, most of our thickness will come from anyway you know these this is where it all this is this is where it starts and this is where it ends this sort of thing right so oh, let's just gotta get the edge constraint out of the way so now we can start thickening some of this now we do have another problem here we haven't selected these and this is what happens right it doesn't naturally the curve doesn't come through um yeah i think that's about right it does seem to be about the same size as the other one i would definitely select these and make it a bit thicker here and probably the thickest um on this side yeah okay so now that we have that done uh we'll look at the blade itself and we want to do these and we want to definitely do these as well um do these sorry not those don't do those <laughs> um it's important that we we thicken the blade a bit more you know for a more a natural uh, feel to it um we want to select the outer vertices vertices over here and then we want to basically um make them uh, definitely uh, definitely thinner so just go in front just go like that you know have a look and, and have a feel about how the blade looks like okay now for example on this side i would uh, very much like to um add a bit more like that you know i mean it just it just creates a slope basically just a bit okay so now let's go into open subdivision let's have a look so that's how our axe looks like for now which i i personally think it's great i mean we could go for a more rounded look over here uh, it's not really a problem because we've added these um, you see we've added these over here and we can definitely pull some out now it does create a bit of a pinch over you know at this uh down here um but let's let's just see if it will really make things better for us yeah, it makes it a bit more rounded, but I will be honest with you, I don't really, I'm not really looking for that because I'm going to have a very flat sort of, uh, you know, I'm going to have some very nice details on this side and the flatter it is, the better it will be. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Again, pref uh, your preference really depends on what you want to do with it. Um, okay, so now uh, we'll move on to creating the triangles at the top. Um, and then we're just going to start using crease modifier on the whole on the on the whole um, head um, axe head to um, you know put our shapes in in order. So now for our um, basically for for these um, pointy uh, metal pieces at the top uh, that we have in the reference image, um, as you can see them over there, we'll use a cylinder to create them. So let me just um, basically deactivate the handle and the um, and, and that uh, head and the axe head. So what we're going to do now, well actually no, let's just leave them for now because I want to center the cylinder over here. So I'm just going to go in top view. Uh, I am going to go here to create a cylinder. Uh, let's just activate F4 and just sort of eyeball the location. 
and I think that's about right. Um, so now once it's released, so once you put in the cylinder, once you release it, you can st you can still modify a bit, you know, the, some of the cylinder um, options. Like now we're looking at the height. So I've just increased the height to 2.3. It doesn't really matter. We're going to modify it. Now right click to get out of the cylinder selection mode, go into the modifier list, and this is our cylinder. I'm just going to press W on the uh, keyboard to move the cylinder a bit uh, better into place. Uh, our points are going to show up on this side, this side, this side, and this side, which is fine. Now we're going to go into perspective mode again and, um, you know, just, just uh, have a look at what our cylinder is. So th that's where it is at the minute. I'm just going to bring it up. Um, on the y-axis until it reaches this point, which is okay. Uh, I'm going to increase its size a bit, just because it's just too, uh, the height is not too big. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm basically going to take the um, handle and the head out of the, um, you know, out of sight. I'm gonna go into front view, I'm going to press Alt X on the keyboard to make the cylinder, um, you know, visible through. Uh, that's about right in there. Now these uh, points don't have to be perfectly centered. I'm not going to fuss around. I mean, I could turn this um, cylinder a bit so you know the point basically falls perfectly there, which you know we can do that. So now I want to add an edit poly on top of this. I'm uh, going to go to vertex mode by pressing 1 on the keyboard. Um, and right, so I've got an alignment. I've got this one aligning with that point. Not so much over here. Again, not really that much of a problem. I'm going to go in my cut tool now. And I'm going to cut from up here and take it all the way down here. And then also I'm going to cut from here to, let's say, this point over here. Right? Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side, which but by, by that what I mean is I'm going to take this and unite it with, um, sorry, I'm going to add one there. Hmm, bit of a problem. It's selecting, so I'm just going to click ignore back face. Hopefully that will fix it. No. So what I'm going to do, see it's, it's done it on the other side, but it's fine. I'll just do it like that. Okay, and now I'm going to select from our newly created vertex and go, you know, I'm just going to go a bit to the round. I think it's going to be about there, but yeah, something like that. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we'll do is we'll go into polygon mode and select our newly created polygons, just like that. And hopefully if nothing got, went wrong, we should be okay. Now you see here, right here, we've got one of the uh, stranglers, so we want to select that. Okay, so now Control i to invert selection and delete. And now I'll go into, this is, this is basically what, we, what, what we're left with from our, um, uh, from what we've done. Okay, which looks about, not, you know, looks okay. Uh, we're just going to bring back our um, handle and our uh, axe head. I'm going to press Alt, Alt X on the keyboard to basically uh, bring these back in. Okay, well, that's okay. Now I'm just going to go out of polygon mode and just drag these shapes a bit into the blade. Just not, not very much about there. Uh, I'm going to go into front view again. Let me deactivate the handle. Um, and from this point, I just want to, oh, sorry, I just need to be in rectangular selection mode. So from this point, I just want to bring these up a bit. Um, yeah, a bit tricky here. Uh, I think I should be raising it from that, at that end. Oh, no, sorry. I know what I should be doing. I'm going to bring this, um, uh, I'm going to bring this down a bit, like so. Um, and then I'm going to take the whole thing higher. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks about right. Um, I think, I think it will do just, just fine. Now, some of the things that we want to do want to clean up this topology a bit. So again, just, you know, connect some of these, um, points, uh, make sure we don't have any, 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 qual any, uh, end gons, uh, forming in here. I'm just going to alt Q on the keyboard to, 
I'll isolate the selection so we can better see what we need to uh, weld. I'm just gonna do that. That's okay over there. This is okay. Oh, I've got a few here. It's more than a few actually. Yeah, so that now fixed it. Um, yeah, I think this is about okay. We can we can check it with the end goal and check it later. Right, so we've got that done. I'm going to go into rotate mode and I'm going to rotate by 180 degrees and press OK. I'm also going to attach, you know, with an edit poly active, we can select attach and attach the other one. And now I've basically made one. Um, uh, oh, sorry about that. I'm going to. Uh, I just need to get out of attach mode. <laughs> right, so now I've got that done. Um, okay, now I go into front facing mode again. And I want to select these top uh, vertic vertices and I want to bring them in a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, a bit um, something like that. Okay. And now what we want to do is we want to add a shell modifier on top. So I've just added shell. Um, oh, why do it have such a weird effect? It's a bit odd. Let me just go back before I created the other side and attached it. And let's add a shell over here. Yeah, that's about that's that's better. Right, okay, so we just need to add the shell already, which is fine. I want to bring it up a bit, actually, to have this. Yeah, hmm, yeah, something like that. Okay, and now let's do the rotation and 180 degrees, press OK. And let's, add, let's go to edit poly and attach. Right, and now I want my handle to show up. Don't want to attach my handle, I don't know why I keep doing that. Okay, so go into front mode, uh, select these polygons and just pull them in a little bit. Yeah, and deselect the polygons and pull in the mesh a little bit as well. Okay, and we, wanna, we want to lift it a bit higher. And I think that's, a, that's about okay. Right, okay. So... We want to attach the these to the handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the handle, go to the edit poly modifier over here, and then attach, right? Go to open subdiv, and it opens subdivs everything. Now we are going to make these edges a lot um, thicker, right? But if we go to open subdiv and we add some more iterations, you can see what's happening basically. You know, it's very smooth, but uh, a metal axe is not going to be smooth. And I do notice something here. Um, if we take the iterations off, you see that? We can't have that. It just it needs to be a lot more um, consistent. So I'm just going to select this. I'm going to double click this loop. And then if I press Control and I press on the vertex, it will select just the vertices of that. I'm going to go into top mode, uh, scale, and just do that. Uh, same thing here. Uh, double click the loop the edge and then go into vertex mode and oh sorry gotta make sure you're using the right scale tool while doing this right now when i go into open subdiv it's a bit better right okay so that's okay in terms of what we needed to do over on that side um some of the other things that we might want to do we want to go to the you know the handle still the handle we want to uh, put some of these shapes inwards, you know, they're, they're definitely um, way too far out. So I'm going to select all these vertices, ver ver vertices, uh, vertices, I don't, it's always been difficult for me to say that. Right, so I've just, um, I'm just pulling them a bit in, something like that. Uh, we do, you know, if we look on the reference image over there, um, you know, let me just have a look at it. You can see how it's an inset in 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 this in this wood here, right? So the only way that we could um, we could do that is if we 
basically and set our uh, well um, uh, you know use the scale model uh, use a scale use the scale on the, on the handle to bring it inwards but we also need to look at the handle itself because um, that's also you know plays a role into all of this so let's bring the hand let's bring the uh, we'll bring in the handle the head the axe head um, so if we look now right we'll select the axe head make it transparent and then I'm going to go back to the handle go into go to edit poly go into poly into polygon selection and I will select the middle bit over on this side yeah and then on this side as well okay and then I'm going to scale them inwards oh. right so it won't allow me to bring them inwards which is a bit of a shame but no not to not to panic uh, basically what we'll do is uh, if we deselect one size and we move can definitely move that in uh, not not by holding shift so we can um, well actually you know what I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fuss around with this I'm just gonna do an uh, I'm going to do an inset um, increase that a little bit let's say by 0 0.5 something like that just press OK and then I can bring that in and just scale it down something like that and we'll do the same thing on this side starting from the top there yeah so inset it's going to remember the settings and now I'm just gonna take it backwards and scale a little bit let's have a look So I'm going to add, activate the turbo smooth, um, and I'm going to look into this now. Hmm, still not perfect. Still not not exactly what I wanted. Um, so let me just go into my handle again. Ooh, okay, I can bring these in words. You know they can still show, but they're not perfect. because we don't, it's not wide enough basically so I'm just going to drag it out a bit I'm just gonna leave it around there but now we're gonna have we're gonna have some problems with our normal maps yeah you know what I'm gonna it's just gonna leave it like that to be honest I'm not gonna mess with it I think it's just gonna be the you know too much too much work for nothing um, okay so that's what we have <clears throat> at the minute uh, one thing that we could also do, you know, um, we can uh, we can add we can help with with a crease set over here, and that will. So when you start crease setting, you just really need to make sure you're not going to modify the topology anymore. Uh, you can you can move them around, you can um, you know you, you can do all sorts of things, but just don't you can move the vert the polygons around, but just don't modify the topology by removing edges and and so on. So on top of this edit poly, I'm just going to add a crease set. I'm going to go to edge mode. Um, and now I'm going to start selecting. So what you want to do is you want to decide which of the edges you actually want to crease. So right now I've just selected that top one all the way to this uh, point. Um, I do want this to remain, you know, I, I do want it this way. So I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. Now I will have to manually select some of these as there are some triangles over here. Um, yeah, and I'm just going to keep this like that let me just double click that I think we won't have any problems with it um, you know we're gonna have to do this over here um, and select it all the way on the other side so what we want to do now we want to create a set uh, just put it to the maximum it's not a problem and let's go into open subdivision and have a look so this is how it shows up 
I'm just going to increase our iterations a bit. So you can see that now it's uh, taken quite a nice shape. Um, these effects that you see over here are basically because of the triangles that we, well, not the triangles, but, but how the topology unfolds and especially where the triangles are. But to be honest, it's not really a problem because, uh, you know, we, we've got these shapes over here. Let's just go back to open subdiv. But it does add a nice sort of roughness to the to the edges uh, that the axe would need anyway. Um, okay, so we've added those creases there. Uh, let's just see where we want to add some more. Um, thinking down here and, you know, below, basically. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the, that, the those edges at the top selected. I'm going to double click underneath and just start selecting some of these maybe do that as well yeah i mean why not yeah it's gonna look okay um then select these select on this side okay now we can right click the edge set and say add selection to set and now when we go to open subdiv you'll see that these have been now added into the whole thing as well um, I do see in here a bit of pinching, uh, which I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not um, particularly fond of. Even if I go to, well, going to four iterations sort of fixes it, I, I believe. Right, now going to crease set again, we will want to have a bit of a crease over here as well, I believe. Yeah, just to make, just to give it a bit of a, you know, a better shape. So let's just see how that looks like. So if I would add that to the, um, you know, up, update set from selection and I go to open subdiv, this is sort of the effect that I get. And I, to be honest, I actually do like it. So I'm thinking I'm just going to continue with it. Same thing. And I don't want to do this here at the bottom. I just like to like, uh, I would like to leave that to collapse. So same thing on this side, because the symmetry, uh, because we use symmetry on this, whatever we selected on that side, we'll select on this one. So it's, it's actually quite safe. Um, and now I want to work on this side as well. Um, okay, and now let's go like that. It's gone all the way here where I believe I'm just going to add these as well. And I'm just going to leave it to collapse over there. So again, update set from selection, go to open subdiv and let's have a look. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not bad. Definitely not bad. I just have these pinches that I don't, as I said, I'm not really fond of. Oh, well, this is why we have this pinch over here because we have um, that edge selected. Uh, I don't know how that happens. So update set from selection. Let's have a look. Okay, no more pinching of that sort. We've got one over here. And this is because all these triangles are uniting in one place. You see. Um, not really a lot that I can do. But it shouldn't really cause as much harm once we add the texture in. So it shouldn't really be a problem. But another thing that I want to do is I want to create a new set. Uh, with this end over here. So I want to select these. Oh, right. Okay, look at that. We might actually have a problem here. So well, I'm going to go to my edit poly, go to element mode. I wonder if this is going to mess up my creases. So I'm just, I'm just going to detach these elements as object one. And let me just have a look. If I go now to uh, open subdiv, am I safe? Was I okay to remove those? I'm just going to right click the edge set and select elements in set. Let's have a look. Yeah, we're okay. Nothing has changed here. So we're safe. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go to this object. Um, going to isolate it. And let's have a look a little bit at the topology of it. I think there are some problems. You see that there? I don't know why that's happened. So let me just select all the both of these and delete them. And then I'm going to go through these polygons and delete them. 
I'm going to go to border mode and select that and cap it. Yeah. And then I'm going to have a look as to what's going on over here. Because this is where our problem has started from. And I'm just going to select these polygons and delete them. We're going to select that edge and that edge and bridge. Oh, I said select that edge and that edge and bridge. Um, and then select this edge and that edge and bridge. That's it. Okay, now let's go into um, let's go into um, press E. Oh, we will have to center this. Mm -hmm. Now this is going to be a bit of a problem, and I'll show you why. So once we take these out of isolation, now if I rotate, you see the rotation is not exactly in the middle of the object, so we're going to have a problem. But let's just try anyway. See what happens. This is this is basically the effect of that. So at 180 degree, this is what we're going to get. So shouldn't really be that much of a problem if I do this well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it should be fine. I don't like the fact that they're uh, they're obviously. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mirror it. Um, and just mirror it on the y-axis so now they're pretty much equals and I'm going to push this a bit like that uh, we did mess it up didn't we okay so I'm just going to delete them um, I'm going to effect, to activate these I'm gonna go to top view I'm gonna go to effect to the pivot point effect pivot point and then I'm going to move the pivot point over around here. Yeah. Now I'm going to deactivate that and go to rotation again and do it by 180 degrees. And now we should be okay. Yeah. Okay. Now let's attach this one to this one. We'll go into... Um, Isolation mode, go to edge. Well, actually, let's just add a crease. Go to edge and start selecting these creases. Uh, it's a lot of busy work, so you get the idea. Just do all these creases and then we'll, um, we'll add an open, we'll, we'll attach them to the open subdiv. So now we'll just create a, a crease and go to maximum, um, you know, the edge set, the, the uh, crease set, we'll, we'll take it to the maximum. And now we will go out of isolation mode. We won't be adding an open subdiv to, to here. What we'll do is instead we'll select the handle, go to edit poly, and then we will attach these. And now when we go to our open subdiv, they are all going to be, um, affected by the open subdiv yeah um, some other things that we want to do is we will probably want to go to polygon to sorry to um, want to go into uh, element mode select these elements and just push them out a bit something like that okay now get out of element mode and go to open subdiv again. And this is basically our, our effect. And I believe uh, we should be ready now to take this into ZBrush. So I'll catch you up. I'll catch you into ZBrush. We'll start going to, we're going to start adding the details to the, um, to the blade. Uh, what we'll do is we'll make sure that we have a, a clean, you know, iteration. So we're on turbo smooth. We'll take that to four. Uh, actually, let me just deactivate these. Yeah, and go to Turbo Smooth. Just leave that to four, and we'll put this other one to four as well. We'll want to rename them. So this one is going to be uh, Axe Handle, and the other one, oh, sorry, my mouse is acting up. And then the other one, we will rename this to Axe Head. And we'll export these as FBX and we'll start, um, you know, playing with them in, 
in uh, ZBrush. Just remember to keep this scene alive because we will come back to these and tr turn them into a low poly uh, when we're done in ZBrush. So I'll see you guys in the second part of the of the tutorial, which is sculpting in ZBrush and um, adding them back into uh, 3ds Max. Uh, thank you for watching so far. If you enjoy what you've seen, please leave a like, uh, subscribe, and and uh, press the ring, the uh, the sorry, the notifying bell. Uh, whenever I post something new, you will be able, you will get a notification. Um, if you have any questions, please ask away. I'm on Facebook. I'm, I'm on, on YouTube all the time. You know, you, you guys can find me at any given point and I will try to help you as much as I can. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next uh, part.